Hey guys, it's Bub here. The day I've been waiting for has finally came. NT Dev has officially released Tiny11. Now if you've been a supporter of this channel, you know that we've taken a look at quite a few off-brand versions of Tiny11, like Nexus Lite OS 11, and they've been lightweight, but they haven't exactly been perfect. There's been some things missing, and it just wasn't a great experience. Compared to Tiny10, which of course is based off Windows 10, where everything was basically perfect. It didn't appear like there was any spyware or anything like that. It was beautiful. So I've personally been waiting for Tiny11 since Windows 11 came out. I'm very eager to take a look at it here today. So let's get into it. Just for testing purposes, I have this VM set to 512 megabytes of RAM as Tiny11 is supposed to be tiny and lightweight. So, and I know that on his YouTube channel or on his Twitter, he was able to get Tiny11 to work on 384 megs of RAM. So let's boot up the VM and see what we can do. And this is a RAM disk issue. Obviously this is because of, well, the fact that we have 512 megabytes of RAM. So 512 may be enough for the actual, you know, Windows install, for Windows itself, but not the installer. So we're gonna bump it up to four gigs uh, just to get it to boot and then we might bump it down later, but we'll see. All right, and here we are inside of the installer. Again, looks pretty much like the regular Windows 11 installer. One thing I do like though is that it did bypass that TPM hardware requirement, um, which is one thing that most installers have done. Um, but we're gonna agree to the terms, unallocated space, and that's it. That was a very quick setup. All right, and just to compare the two ISOs, on the right-hand side, we have the 22H2 ISO. and the left-hand side, we have Tiny11. 2.95 gigs on Tiny11 compared to 5.11 gigs on Windows 11 22H2. That's a big difference. All right, and here we go. One thing that I've always liked about NT Dev's custom versions of Windows is that he always left in the out-of-box experience. I know a lot of, you know, like, Nexus Lite OS 11, they just cut the out-of-box experience and went straight into, you know, creating a user account by default. NTDev doesn't do that. Um, I don't know if it just provides a sense of security or what, but knowing that I can create my own account and go through the setup on my own, it just makes me feel a little bit better about what's actually in the operating system. Now, as we move through this, um, one thing that this actually just reminded me of is I want to see if Tiny11 can get updates because Tiny10 cannot get updates. The files are deleted. There's no update mechanism in place. Uh, very excited to see if this can get updates as NTDev on his Twitter has promised many more security features that have been implemented into Tiny11, which very well could make it a feasible option for daily use on lower end hardware. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create that user account just by a default name, just skipping the password field. We actually get to choose privacy settings for a device, which I don't recall this being in Tiny10, and that's it. We are now going to go right into that, hi, we're getting your PC ready thing. You know, the typical stuff, um, pretty cool. I'm very impressed that this has gone so smoothly. But again, it's NT Dev's official work, not some off-brand, so. Pretty happy about that. All right, and here we are in the desktop of Tiny11. I just got VMware tools installed off camera. So the first thing that strikes me is something is missing from the taskbar. Um, I'm not sure if it's the fact that the search bar hasn't been updated yet. Um, oh, um, this doesn't come with Microsoft Edge. That's what we're missing. By default, Edge is pinned to the taskbar. Um, Edge is not there because of, I guess, we don't want to include a browser anymore. Um, that, that threw me off for a few seconds. I'll even when it was just a magnifying glass, I, I knew that it was missing something. So I just want to see what version of Windows this is running, um, what specific version. Uh, 22H2, I knew that. 22, 6, 21, 5, 25. That is actually the latest version of Windows 11. 22, 6, 21, 5, 25. Um, well, I'm, I mean, even those came out on like literally a few days ago. I'm, I'm not really surprised to see that. So in terms of applications, we have our typical accessibility that comes with Windows, calculator, camera, file explorer, get started. I feel like this could definitely be removed if, you know, Microsoft lets you remove it. I didn't know, I don't know if they actually let you do that or not, uh, but it would be nice to get rid of. Uh, Microsoft Store, Microsoft Teams, also could get rid of that too. Notepad, Paint, Photos, um, Settings, Snipping Tool, Sticky Notes, Terminal, Windows Security, and Windows Tools which comes with all that regular crap that looks like it's from Windows Vista. The one thing I do wish is that you could remove these icons from the you know start menu, 
they're literally just icons. They're not actually installed on your computer. They link to the Microsoft Store, but they're like advertisements, and they're just really annoying. If NT Dev found a way to remove that, I would love to know, as I have some computer labs that, by when a new user signs in over AD, these sync and it just looks bad, especially TikTok. Moving on, we can see some of those security features with Windows Security. I don't believe that Windows Security was included uh, back in Windows or Tiny 10. I think that that was actually removed for some reason, but I'm glad it's present here. You know, security is a big thing, especially with all the stuff that's online and w Windows continuously pinging online every, you know, forever. One thing I would do want to see, like I said earlier, is updates. Can this get updates? We always got an error when we tried to update Tiny 10 or even the off-brand versions of Tiny 11. They would always throw an error saying that they're missing, you know, Windows update files or crap like that, and it, it, it's updating. It is downloading updates. That is incredible. So Tiny 11 is capable of receiving updates. So yeah, I mean, that is really the entirety of Tiny 11. I mean, there's not much really to take a look at here. I'm just very happy that, you know, updates are supported, security is a bigger concern, and oh, never mind, one thing. I didn't do this in my Tiny 10 video, I got yelled at it in the comments, um, but CPU and RAM usage, CPU is actually at 66%, okay, we're going down a little bit, uh, never mind, we're at 98, 99, 96. Uh, memory itself is actually 2.5 out of 4 gigs, which begs the question, is this really tiny? Um, oh, the updates are taking up a lot of that CPU and RAM. Okay, that makes sense. So if we wouldn't have ran Windows Update, then we would have been a little better. Uh, but Windows Update, of course, hence why it was probably removed in those older versions. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new here as we do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. Definitely make sure to check out NT Dev's official video and tweet on Tiny11, and I look forward to the future Tiny OS projects. I'll see you all in the next one.